Hey everybody, Mike of Mike Likes here with you tonight. It's a crisp, clear night in December. That's pretty rare in the Midwest. We're going to do some EAA, Electronically Assisted Astronomy. And tonight we're going to do it with a Celestron C8 telescope. This one here. Um, that orange part is a dew shield, so the C8 actually ends at that black edge. But I'll take the dew shield off so you can see what we're doing here. Otherwise, this is a very standard uh, Celestron Evolution mount. I've got uh, the GPS so that I don't have to enter time and date. And I've got the StarSense camera up there. So I'll be right back with you. I'm going to take the dew shield off so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I've removed the dew shield, and what you can see here is that I've got the Hyperstar made by Starazona. They're a wonderful company out in uh, Arizona, in Tucson, I think. And instead of my C8 having a secondary mirror, it's got the Hyperstar, which is basically a corrector, reducer, flattener, just whiz-bang piece of glass and optics that reduces the focal length of the telescope from... Uh, 2032 millimeters to about 390 and it also speeds up the telescope from an f10 to an f2 so those of you who know about photography know that that's 25 times faster what is that going to buy us it's going to buy us the ability to image tonight without needing a guide scope an equatorial mount this is just a plain jane alt as mount i don't have to polar align it i'm just going to do a quick alignment with my star sense camera which you'll see and then my camera is a uncooled ZWO ASI 294MC. So it's a one-shot color camera, nothing fancy. It's a four-third sensor. It's a nice camera, but it's not an amazing camera. It's not a cooled camera. And it's uh, 28 degrees outside Fahrenheit, so you don't need a cooled camera in Ohio winter. You just need to live in the Midwest. And um, for tonight, I've got it connected. I'll connect it to my MacBook. So you see the you know long USB cable and the adapter. Uh, you can use ASI Air, you can, you know, do wireless setups, but I'm just going to do it with a wire. And I mean, other than that, we're going to get it set up. A couple things I should mention, I've gone ahead and I've collimated the Hyperstar. You just have to, you see those screws on there, you just push and pull them to make sure it's even. Hyperstars are very easy to use. And yeah, once you've done a Hyperstar imaging session, you'll see why it's so great. All right, so let's get this thing out there and um, I'll put on some warm clothes and we'll uh, go ahead and uh, do some EAA. All right, I've got my dew shield back on. You can see that my USB cable is going through the pass-through. This will keep our corrector plate clear of any kind of, uh, you know, dew and humidity, in this case, frost, because we're below freezing. And I'm um, not gonna be using the finder scope too much. I am gonna uncap the StarSense camera so that we can go ahead and um, get our alignment done. So we're not actually gonna verify it with an eyepiece. It's just gonna do the alignment, and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so we're outside. I'm gonna go ahead and do my StarSense auto-align. So the first thing I'm gonna do Turn on the scope and it comes to life here. It's verifying the packages. It's gonna initialize the camera and the GPS. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to communicate with those devices. And you can see we've got them connected in the aux ports here. I've got my hand controller camera. And then under here you have more aux ports. You've got the GPS and one free if I need it. Okay, so star sense is ready. I'm going to go ahead and press a line. Star sense auto enter. It's going to tell me to set the horizontal position point. So you can see that this line here matches up with this more or less. And we're facing roughly due west. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my lamp. And we're going to go ahead and enter. And it's going to do its alignment. Now the alignment is going to take about two minutes. And you'll see here it's going to take pictures of the stars and plate solve them. It's acquiring the image. It's sensing what it's doing. It found 50 stars that time. And you see in a second, it's solving. It solves pretty quickly. This is a faster CPU than the standard next star hand controller. And the benefit for us is that it's doing the alignment without me even having to take out an eyepiece or use my finder scope. I have a whole separate video about star sense, but I figured I'd show you a little bit. So it's going to do this two more times and then we'll be aligned. And I'll be back with you. And just like that, after a minute and a half, you can see our alignment's complete. It's more perfect than a human being could ever do um, with the time given. So I'm going to go ahead and switch us over to the computer and I'm going to have the scope navigate to the star Alnatac, which is 
very, very adjacent to the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula in the uh, constellation of Orion in the winter sky. And um, I'll show you guys what that looks like on the computer. So we've got our star on the tack that's right there. If you see my mouse pointer right there in the middle, there's the horse head and there's the flame nebula. Now the, the orientation, you may have to flip it or invert it, but you get the idea of what's going on. I am going to go ahead and run a stack on this. So that's this button over here and it's going to start stacking these. And so we're gonna go ahead and stack these exposures. And what I wanna tell you is it's, uh, it's taking exposures and you can see it's stack two uh, ignored five, never mind that. Um, so we've already got a 20 second exposure and you can see we're already starting to resolve detail. I can't see this with my eyeballs, no matter what eyepiece I use, no matter what telescope, I'd never be able to see this, but the camera can, and I can play with the histogram a little bit, which is conveniently right over here. And if we want to make the sky darker, we can. Don't mind that I lost my keyboard. So you're already pulling out detail just that easy. You can bring the lights down too. And there's your there's your horse head and your flame nebula in your Bortle 6 driveway. So that's how EAA works. And that's why it's so valuable for those of us with lots of light pollution. And you can see I've just stacked 60 seconds and it's already looking like a pretty cool picture. Now, obviously, you're not going to get astrophotography or of the week or the year with this, but look how easy this is with 10 second exposures with a hyperstar on a, you know, non-edge, non-special Celestron SCT. So I hope that's been useful, guys. I'll do quite a few more objects. I could do probably, I don't know, 10, 20 objects an hour this way, and it's just a lot of fun. All right, well, thanks for joining me. If you like the video, throw a thumbs up. If you love it, subscribe to my channel. I post stuff all the time on astronomy and gadgets and all those kinds of things. All right, I hope you guys have a great evening, clear skies, and I'll see you next time.